Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Red Goblins. But before you click away, it's a goblin deck with a bit of a twist as we're playing a few new additions that you typically don't see in these goblin anger decks, including four copies of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, generating a 2-2 goblin shaman, which also synergizes with the rest of the team and generates treasures when it attacks. And Fable has always been at its best in decks that have a somewhat low curve with cheap removal so we can clear a path for the goblin shaman token and then ideally we also have some neat creatures with enter the battlefield abilities that we eventually get to copy with the reflection of Kiki Jiki, and that's also where the twin shot sniper comes in handy. We can channel it early for two mana, dealing two damage to any target, so a pretty decent burn spell, and then later in the game we can cast it for four mana as a 2 3 reach, dealing two damage to any target when it enters, so then we can also copy it with a reflection of Kiki Jiki to generate a ton of value, and then discarding some additional lands with the second chapter can also come in handy to make sure we keep drawing action. Then looking through the rest of the deck, some of our key goblins for sure is Battlecry Goblin, 2 mana 2-2, two, two. for 1 and a red gives the goblins we control plus one also and haste until end of turn, so we can potentially wait to play it until turn 4 so we can activate it right away. And then with pack tactics, when the Battlecry Goblin attacks, if we attacked with creatures with total power 6 or greater this combat, we get to generate a 1-1 one, one, a red goblin creature token that's tapped and attacking. Sometimes we can wait to pump our team after getting that pack tactics trigger, so we can also pump up the 1-1 one, one goblin token so we can output more damage. And then another payoff is the Hobgoblin Bandit Lord, a 2-3, giving other goblins we control plus one plus one. Can also pay a red and tap it, and then the Bandit Lord deals damage equal to the number of goblins that entered the battlefield under our control this turn to any target. So you can also maybe use it as removal, or deal some additional damage if we don't want to put the Bandit Lord in harm's way. Then we also need some one drops, which is where we have the Charger, a 1-1 that when it dies deals damage equal to its power to any target. It also greatly benefits from pump effects like the Battlecry Goblin and Bandit Lord so it can deal more damage on the way out and then Javelinier, a 1-1 one, one with haste, and when it becomes blocked, deals 1 damage to target creature blocking it. We also have some more cheap burn spells with Play With Fire to join our Twin Shot Sniper. Hobgoblin, Captain, a 3-1 with Pank Tactics gains First Strike, so a great enabler for Battlecry Goblin, and we can potentially enable Pank Tactics on turn 3, thanks to our Hulking Bugbear, which comes down with haste. It's also great alongside our Captain and Battlecry Goblin, and just an individually powerful 3-drop. And then our mana base has the Crucible of Defiance, which can maybe be channeled, generating some hasty 1-1 one, one spirit tokens. And then of course, Den of the Bugbear, another nice mana sink to have access to in the late game, especially against control decks. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand could use some of our goblin synergies, but I'm gonna keep... Turn 2, probably still play Charger, or we could keep it in hand to discard to Fable eventually, but I think the added pressure is still worth it. Especially if we find one of our Anthem effects. Spirited Companion, traits for Fireblade Charger. Let's get the Bugbear going. And deal one on the way out. At least we have some cheap removal here, so we can take out creatures like the Naturalist if they show up. It's gonna be a Circle of Confinement going after Bugbear, yeah, that's a great answer. So now... We can play Fable and probably keep Land in Hand to discard, as opposed to keeping a play with Fire. Which could have its advantages if our opponent plays, let's say, the... Kami of Transients and tries to grow it, we could kill it in response. It's gonna be a wedding announcement instead. Okay, so we can discard both lands. So we can run out our Hulking Bugbear, and then we could also kill the token if we'd like. Okay, opponent's at 7. And Katilda, 
Okay, that's a 3-3 lifelink. So a little bit too large for us to take out with Play With Fire. And a Weaver of Harmony as well. Go and make another token. Okay, let's untap. And the Bandit Lord was a great draw. So now we can play Bandit Lord. Do we attack first or maybe kill Weaver? If we kill Weaver, attack with the team. They could jump, take five, and not have to give up Katilda. So I think I would rather attack to ensure we can kill Katilda. And now we can kill Weaver. And Katilda will shrink down and trade. And now they don't have a creature in play to disturb Katilda once again. Another wedding announcement. His opponent will get some 1 1 end of turn, which will turn into 2 2 creatures. But we do have Reflection plus Bandit Lord as potentially a neat combo. So let's see here. If I copy Bandit Lord. And then just attack with the team, what happens? Then they have to jump, jump. That seems fine. Opponent falls to two. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. So managed to even beat Katilda here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's pretty nice. Got a burn spell, double battle cry. So we can maybe play one on two, and then play one on turn four and activate it after playing a turn three hulking bugbear. Got the lance to do it. Up against the green white. Maybe an enchantment deck. Nope. Band colors. So not quite sure what to make of it. A ranger class to play. Alright, so we'll just play Bugbear, attack for three. Don't want to trade Battlecry Goblin for a wolf token. But then next turn we have a ton of options, including play with fire plus Bugbear. It's going to be a Gala Greeters into Initiate. Alright, that's quite a few blockers now. So, probably gonna end up killing the Gala Greeters, and then we're probably okay attacking with the team, although they get to eat a 1-1 for free, essentially. Alternatively, I could play a Hasty Javelinier, attack with a team, we still enable pack tactics, and then I can pump, and still play with Fire Gala Greeters, which I also kind of like. And that way we get to pump the 1-1 token we generate. Although I'm most likely gonna kill the Gala Greeters no matter what. And then we don't have to pump, we could just play another Battlecry Goblin. Since now we get to keep our 1-1s alive. So I think we'll go for that. Kill Gala Greeters. Trade happens. Play a backup Battlecry Goblin. And then next turn with a Lance we could play Bugbear and pump, or just pump twice. Can be a Falco. Okay, that explains the band colors. And there's a lance, so I think we're gonna continue with our plan here. Bugbear, smash, make a token, and then pump the team. Opponent's gonna eat our battle cry goblin for free. Maybe trade initiate for a javelinier, and then we still deal 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so our opponent should be dead. So in that case, they're chumping with initiates. So maybe they don't even have the option of trading for Battlecry. And they have to just block a double bugbear. Yeah, this is not gonna work. So initiates jumping. Okay, 
All right, I guess this could work. But then we get to keep our battle cry, which is arguably our most valuable goblin, and our opponent's at one. So they'll need some removal here to survive, or some big lifelinker. No counters for Falco to play anything off the top. And we could also top deck any of our burn spells to close out the game at this point. Okay, Elspeth giving a lifelink. Right. Could maybe do it. Clean up this town. They can't afford to attack, and another battle cry will certainly do it. So activate so that can also attack. All going face. Awesome. So yeah, nice brutal efficient curve and Battlecry Goblin does not mess around. Get to level up and on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could use a few more goblins, but we have a lot of removal and then Battlecry one of our better cards. So I'll give it a shot. Turn one initiate we can easily kill. But we can wait and see what else they play. Her opponent plays like an Aspirant, so we just kill Aspirant instead. So we can develop our Battle Cry on 2, perhaps. And then next turn, maybe play with Fire, play another Battle Cry. And then we can Hard Cast Twin Shot Sniper on 4. It's gonna be another Aspirant. So now we can no longer kill the Initiates. Hulking Bugbear is tempting, but I think we should take care of the Aspirant before it does more damage. And then add another Battle Cry to the board, seems fine. And then is there any harm in waiting on killing Aspirants? I doubt it when they're stuck on two, and that might change their plan. Okay, Thalia's gonna force issue. And Thalia is a good blocker, but we can just kill it with a twin shot sniper, which ignores the one mana attacks. So, I have a few options. I can channel twin shots and then pump battle cry, which would then generate two 1 1 tokens. Or we can cast the Twin Shots and just attack for 4. So would we rather have a 2-3 reach in play or a pair of 1-1 one, one tokens and get in a little bit of extra damage? I think the 1-1 one, one tokens might be more valuable here, honestly. And we have to activate before attacking if we want to enable pack tactics. Bone falls to 10. And next turn we can Bugbear plus activate or even activate our creature land. So yeah, Puno stuck on mana, but yeah, they didn't lack any plays. And now I'm pretty happy with these 1-1s one when facing Usher. Can hang on to Crucible and go for Bugbear. Don't know if I want to attack with both Battle Cries. I guess it's probably fine since. Our opponent might just be dead to all the extra tokens we generate. Otherwise I could have maybe left one back, so we still have some after they trade for Usher. But our opponent seems pretty dead. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand's pretty land-heavy, although we do have a nice mana sink in Battlecry Goblin, so it's probably still a keep. And then if we draw Fable of the Mirror Breaker, we can also discard extra lands. Maybe wish one of these were a Den of the Bugbear. And let's see what we're up against. Black-Red. Okay, now we can play our Captain instead, and then next turn enable Pack Tactics with our Bugbear, and wait on Battle Cry until turn 4, so we can activate right away. So 
So we're off to a nice aggressive start. Can't get rid of any blockers that show up. Opponent on Jund. And they shake down heavy. Okay, so this is maybe a fight rigging deck. So we can play Battle Cry. And then just double play with fire, shake down heavy. If I battle cry, I can attack, make a 1 1. But then I don't have the mana to pump and play with fire. So I think this is just the safest play. And then next turn we can pump or battle cry a bunch. It's gonna be fight rigging, which, yeah, is now lacking an enabler. And our opponent seems pretty dead on board. Unless they've got a one mana answer to battle cry. Which they don't. And, uh, yeah, can activate or activate after making the token. Doesn't matter at this point. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is keepable. Some early removal to maybe clear a path for our goblin token. And battle cry goblin always a welcome sight as well. Facing a blue deck. Blue whites. So probably control. Let's see if they have a counter spell. Not yet. Sweepers are definitely a problem for our deck. If we can get in some early damage. Looks like a creature deck after all. With a sentinel. So we'll attack first. See if they have any shenanigans that we need to play with fire. And then play fable second main. That resolves. Okay, so we can discard some mountains. Sentinels we can play with fire. Uh -huh, I see, so maybe a party deck with some shapeshifters. Okay, discard two lands and then we can still hulking bugbear, clear the shapeshifter, which next turn would turn into a 4-4. Enable pack tactics, have a good time. And then we still have the treasure to potentially cast another play with fire if we'd like. And that might be worth it to go for it now so they have less mana to work with next turn, but our opponent concedes anyway. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and our hand is just a curve of goblins, which is what this deck is all about. Although against Mono White Aggro it would be nice to have some cheap interaction. Can still attack into initiates and trade, which I would be happy with. And then turn two, probably go for captain. Looks like the Boros aggro deck. So the opponent has individually more powerful threats and cheap removal, which can deal with our payoff cards like Battlecry. So overall, I would think that the opponent is favored in the matchup, but we're still going to give it a shot. Javelinier continues attacking, and then we'll keep a captain on defense. Aspirants can pump adversary to train initiate, so yeah, this is a pretty rough curve. Probably have to trade for adversary, or we can keep our captain. Next turn, bugbear enables pack tactics, try and race somehow. Maybe that's still our best bet. Although I don't think we're winning this race. Especially with the etching as well here. Sniper can take out aspirants. But I think the damage has been done. If I snipe the Aspirant, they can no longer put counter on adversary to train initiates. If we bugbear smash, we're just dead on board next turn. So I have to keep something back, like the Javelinier, in which case they would put counter on Aspirant. We hit for 6, down to 12. Still a long way to go, even if we play Battle Crime Pump next turn. So yeah, I don't really see a realistic way out. 
and staying back on defense is just going to lose to the Aspirants. So, yeah, what if we just snipe Aspirants and pass? Can double block Initiate? There's no way with that actually works out, is there? Alright, let's go Bugbear and send these two. Javelnir can trump. But we're probably just dead as a Brutal Cathar. Axel's Javelnir, counter on Adversary, Train Initiate, and that's 9 damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hands could use an extra land, but as soon as we do, we have Fable to find more stuff that we need, and of course a lot of powerful 3-drops to choose from. Double battle cry in the meantime, also not too shabby. Facing an enchantment deck. So we might need some removal if something like Naturalist shows up. Touch the Spirit Realm can answer one of our three drops, so going for Fable might be the preferred play. Especially now that they cannot channel the Touch the Spirit Realm. So, can hit for two. And then Fable. Alternatively, going for Bugbear Smash for five is also not terrible. But uh, let's get the Fable going. And then they do have the option of channeling touch to just get rid of our token, but then we still have our enchantment in play. It's gonna be a naturalist instead. And the circle of confinement getting rid of our token. Okay, so probably want to hang on to the land. So what do we get rid of? Maybe just a javelin here. Or we can try and dig for more removal by getting rid of a second card. Right now, if I play Battlecry, activate Battlecry, I can attack with both, although they can eat to 1-1s for free, so that's not ideal. Problem is, if we get rid of Battlecry, this turn's not going to be incredibly mana efficient, unless I also keep Javelinier. I guess we could just play Javelinier plus Bandit Lord this turn, and then attack, and our opponent wouldn't have any amazing blocks. And this is actually a pretty tough call. I think I just get rid of Javelinier here. And that's a perfect draw. Okay, so now play with Fire Naturalists, play Bugbear, and Smash looks good. So they can touch the Spirit Realm Bugbear, but hopefully that's it. It's gonna be a Weaver and a second Weaver, both 3-3s three and another play with Fire, once again great. Okay, so if I play Bandit Lord, we attack, we enable pack tactics. That seems pretty decent. Alternatively, I can activate Battlecry, which also enables Reflection. So we can copy something else, like another Battlecry. And then if they block a two-part Battlecry, I can finish off Weaver with Play with Fire. Next turn, our opponent's going to try and copy Touch a Spirit Realm to exile multiple creatures. So we have to be a little careful. Yeah, I'm kind of liking this Give My Reflection Haste plan. As it uses our mana quite efficiently. And maybe traps the opponent into blocking. Make some 1-1s. One Alright, opponent's just going for trades. I guess that works too, so no play with fire here. But, uh... We'll have some nice leftovers with our Reflection and the tokens that we can pump next turn. So not quite the play I expected them to make when holding Touch the Spirit Realm. But I guess they just want to survive at all costs. And then now they're going to get rid of Reflection. That's fine. Can either play Battle Cry and activate. Or we can play Bandit Lord, which keeps up Play With Fire. Which does have its advantages if our opponent plays Kami of Transients, for instance. Although Battlecry activates, 
hits for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, puts him to one, and then play with fire can just finish him off. That's probably better. Yeah, 1-1 one, one goblin token in this deck is extremely valuable. And there we have it, so some neat tricks with Battle Cry and Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Okay, we're on the draw, hand is keepable. Especially if we can channel on turn two to maybe take out an opposing creature. Or we can wait until we play Sniper to copy it with Fable, which is always fun. Well, let's see what we're up against, the black-white. So it could be a more controlling deck. As we see a Spirited Companion. Might be okay just uh, channeling the Twin Shot to clear a path for Charger as opposed to trading it. Or we can trade and keep the channel ability for later. I think we want to keep our board presence if possible. And then we'll have plenty of other creatures we can copy with Reflection later. Because the Charger could be quite useful if we draw our Bandit Lord or the Battlecry Goblin. It's gonna be an Aspirant. Alright, now I'm kind of regretting our previous choice. Can still attack into it, and then might want to get in with a Bugbear while I can, as opposed to Fable, which is just gonna get blocked by a 3-3. I was expecting this to be more of a sacrifice deck without necessarily playing cards like Aspirant. Welcoming Vampire 3 4 now. And Aspirant attacks. Play with Fire was a timely draw. So let's attack, and then we can finish off Welcoming Vampire if it blocks. Blocks Fireblade Charger. That's ideal here. Since then we can finish it off with a play with fire. And keep our bugbear. Alright, so next turn discard double mountain. Or we can keep a land to enable den. We'll see what we draw. Acquisitions experts can see both lands. So it does nerf our Fable a little bit. Expert now at 2-3. So we'd love to draw one of our Anthem effects. Never mind, Vanishing Verse exiles our Reflection. Okay, so now I can animate Den of the Bugbear. And then just attacking with Bugbear plus Den. Or I can attack with a Shaman token, which then gets eaten by Expert, but then the 1-1 from Den maybe gets to live. I think we probably don't want to trade away the Shaman just yet. So just send these two. Opponent trades. And eats our 1-1. Okay. So now, still hoping for... Something like a Battle Cry Goblin, maybe a Bandit Lord. Opponent's got two cards in hand, so we can't feel too comfortable. Just sends Bugbear. And the Vanishing Verse exiles it, at least it's no Wandering Emperor. Okay, another Den can help keep up the pressure. But Aspirin gonna grow up to a 4-4, so it's gonna be a little bit too large for us to take out. Teleportation Circle, not the best combo with Aspirin at least. So would a Battle Cry Goblin let us attack here? Would be pretty great. And so is a play with fire. Okay. Animate Dan attack. Opponents most likely blocking. And then we'll be able to finish off Aspirants. Okay. So now our opponent is top decking. Albeit with a teleportation circle. Do I play my land? If they draw another acquisition expert, I would like the mountain in play. So we can maybe activate Battlecry if we top deck it. 
Otherwise, keeping it in hand is also useful for our potential Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So overall, it's probably worth it to play the land. Opponent draws a land, and now they're just dead to Den of the Bugbear getting activated. So yeah, very close game. Opponent got a little bit unlucky near the end here. But uh, yeah, it goes to show the resiliency of the Goblin deck, even if things don't entirely go according to plan. Good to see some nice synergies with Reflection of Kiki Jiki, especially with Battlecry Goblin giving it haste right away, one of my favorite synergies in the deck. And Battlecry Goblin in general, by far the all-star in this deck, keeping it all together. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.